Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, for the last uh, six months, I've been running this tank and uh, with two types of filtration, with a sump uh, that's moving about 2,500, it's rated at 2,500 gallons, it's probably realistically about 2,000 gallons an hour, and an FX6 canister filter. I haven't serviced either one of those over the last six months. I've just been letting them run, even though this stock, this tank has a, a fair amount of stock. But let's go ahead and take a look inside of the FX6 canister, which I've been using exclusively as a uh, mechanical filtration. I have it full of sponges. I think I might even, I might have a bag of pumice in there, I think, that I had left over. But for me, as you as you know, for me, the, the uh, home of beneficial bacteria, in my mind, is primarily this substrate, uh, this very, very uh, deep substrate that I have on my tank. So let's go ahead and take a look inside this, uh, this canister filter right here, which has simply not been, has not been opened up for six months. So you're gonna see it opened up for the first time, just along with me. So let's go ahead and, and crack it open. This FX6, I believe, is about four years old, and uh, I bought it new from a guy on Craigslist who had never opened it, decided to go a different route with his filtration, got a pretty good deal on it, and it's been running pretty solidly. I've had to swap out a couple valves, and uh, but besides that, it's been running pretty, pretty strong. But let's take a look inside and see what it looks like after six months of running as exclusively as mechanical filtration. Now see, I expected that to look a lot worse than that. Take a look at that. That's not bad at all, actually. Actually, that's pretty clean all things considered. Now one of the things I want you to keep in mind is that I have on this uh, FX6, look at that. That's, that's crazy clean. Keep in mind that I have on this FX6 a pre-filter and the pre-filter catches a lot of the gunk and I rinse out the pre-filter every uh, every two weeks so I'm gonna be honest with you I'm, 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 I'm actually a little bit shocked at how clean this is after six months I mean truly the water inside if I was extremely thirsty in a desert I'd drink that water so this this canister truly uh, could be closed up and not even really doesn't really need anything okay you got a little bit of gunk here But before I started using a pre-filter, these sponges were black. I'd pull them out and they'd be black. So I think what we're seeing is a real case here for uh, pre-filters. Pre and uh, let's go a little, a little deeper. Okay, there's some, there's some muck here. There's some muck that was stopped at the bottom of this tray and I'll see if I can pull it out without getting the floor all wet but I can see where some of the muck has accumulated. Now that makes more sense. I mean, I'm, a, I'm still a little shocked at how clean it is. I've opened these things up and had them be completely black. So yeah, there's some muck on these sponges, a little bit. And the trays, the trays have some here, I'll show you. The trays have some buildup. See that little bit of muck buildup 
on the trays. But overall, again, I am extremely shocked and I'm thinking it's got to be it's got to be the pre-filter that's catching a lot of the stuff that would normally go in here that I pull out every week or two and rinse. Uh, there is some Oh, here's that bag of pumice, you can see. It can use a rinse, okay? So it can use a rinse. And you just go ahead and take a look at all of it. If you're wondering, I do rinse my sponges in, um, in tap water. The chlorine and chloramine here in uh, Nashville is negligible, but I'm just not worried about the beneficial bacteria in these sponges in this media because again my beneficial bacteria I am counting on it being primarily in the substrate and so when I when I clean these and put them all back together I never I never see any real adverse reaction in the fish nothing negative Okay, here's the middle tray. Now, if you have a, an FX6, you know that this is not dirty. This is not, a, this is not a dirty tray. This is actually in pretty good shape. Here's more pumice. I had some pumice left over from before so I just decided to throw it in. It's not carbon sponge, which should probably be replaced since these, uh, they're carbon infused and uh, carbon just needs to be replaced. So let's go ahead and get this bottom one out. Usually the bottom one is the dirtiest one and you can see here, that's not dirty at all really. Six months, six months with, with that kind of a load of fish. I mean, the load was lighter in the beginning and it's gotten heavier over time, granted. And here's the bottom tray, the one that's usually the most gunked up. Traditionally in an FX6, this will be the dirtiest one. And it is, I got some gunk there, but overall that sponge is not the worst I've seen. And this tray, of course, could use a rinse. So I'm gonna rinse it all out, put it back together, and uh, get it running again. And I think based on what I'm seeing, this next time I'm gonna let it run for eight months because uh, I could have let this run another two months easy, easy, easy. So I've cleaned and uh, I've cleaned the baskets and all of the uh, sponges inside, and this is ready to go back inside the canister. One of the nice things about flubles is it's almost impossible to put them together incorrectly. So put that in, and we'll put the top on. Uh, let's say I was a year into it, I would also. Um, add some silicone lubricant to the O-ring that runs around inside here. You pull that out, you put some lubricant on it, and you can also lub lubricate the, the O-rings that are right in here that keep these, these uh, sealed up. You have two little O-rings there, and if they ever get cracked or flat in any spot, you need to replace them, but otherwise you can put a little bit of, of food grade silicone lubricant on them, and, and they'll, they'll go a lot longer. So, um, I was shocked by how clean this unit was after running for six months, I will say that. And uh, I, I've, I think it has to be, it can only be one thing, and that's the, uh, the pre-filter that's doing a great job. And of course, the, the sump is, is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. So, I think that might be uh, 
why this is so clean. I am going to extend out the time between servicing to eight months and see how it looks after eight months. At that time, I'll go ahead and service the uh, motor, the pump, and I'll lubricate, uh, I'll lubricate all of the O-rings at that time. So let's go ahead and put this back under, fill it up, get it running, and we'll go ahead and, and service it again in, uh, in eight months and see how it looks at that time. I have to make sure everything is dry because I have a water sensor at the bottom of this Rubbermaid basket and if it picks up any water it'll, it'll, uh, it'll set off an alarm. I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night so I'll make sure everything is dry and I don't need to fill this with water I just hook up the input output open them up and it'll go ahead and fill itself up and, uh, and we'll be good to go. I need to top the tank off because of course we removed a little bit of water from the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of uh, safe to treat the volume of the tank just to, uh, just to be safe. Maybe do anything major, not a bad idea to condition. And I'm gonna be adding a little bit of temperature matched uh, tap water and that'll help the, uh, the overflow that goes to the sump, it'll get that to stop sucking up air and, uh, and allow me to uh, get rid of those micro bubbles that you see in the tank right now. So that increased the water level of the sump and so it's not uh, sucking air anymore. And uh, that stopped the micro bubbles coming out of the sump output. And then I'll go ahead and plug in the, the FX6. Just as a word of caution, whenever you, you plug in a canister after servicing, if you haven't cleaned the hoses, there's going to be a little bit of uh, detritus that will come flying out. Some people have suggested that I go ahead and put a, uh, a net over that area, which isn't a bad idea. That's the pre-filter and the reason why I think this uh, canister has stayed so clean after running continuously for six months. And uh, it captures detritus and has it pretty much just sort of dissolve before it gets sucked into the uh, intake tube. And also captures food that, that can then be picked off by the fish. Instead of having the food run directly into the filter, it gets caught on the outside of the sponge and the fish will, will peck at it. Let's go ahead and fire up this FX6. The output is in the upper right back corner of the tank. You can see a little detritus comes out of the hoses, that's normal. And no, I don't put a net over it, I just let it dissolve. The, um, the FX6 will then turn itself off and then get rid of any excess air and then after a minute or so will then turn itself back on. It, it goes through that process every 12 hours. Sometimes people panic when their unit turns off. They think something's wrong with the unit, but that's just uh, the way it operates. So it's running quiet and strong. I don't see any leaks anywhere in the unit itself. Everything is good. So we are finished with, uh, with the servicing of this FX6, and I'll be marking my calendar for the next service in eight months. Well, I admit, I'm probably uh, as surprised as you are at the condition that I discovered inside of that FX6 after it's run for, for six months. I was uh, a bit shocked, actually, that it was in such good shape, and um, what that tells me is that running it for eight months, maybe even nine months, is entirely possible. Uh, all I had in there really was just a little bit of, uh, of black, a little bit of black detritus and waste at the bottom of the canister and uh, some detritus that I was able to squeeze out of the sponges. But uh, really, um, really a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a canister miracle. And again, 
I think it is that pre-filter that's uh, helping to stop a lot of the, the, the chunks from getting in and allowing them to pretty much just dissolve on the filter or be pecked off by the fish. And that's the only thing that can explain it. And of course, uh, the fact that the, that, that the sump is doing a lot of the heavy lifting, uh, turning over you know, 2,000 to 2,500 gallons per hour. So I um, hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll crack it open in, in eight or nine months, see what it looks like then. And at that point, I'll service the, uh, the impeller, the motor. I'll, uh, I'll uh, put some, some um, food grade silicone on all of the O-rings. You'll give it a real major servicing. And, uh, but until then, I'm just gonna let it run like a well-oiled machine, have it do its job. As you can see, the tank has already cleared up. It's just been a few minutes since I fired up that FX6 and those particles have already disappeared, either gone into the filter, settled on the substrate, or been uh, taken in by the, uh, by the sump. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and be sure to sub and hit that bell if you haven't already. It tells YouTube that something good is going on here and encourages YouTube to uh, put the channel in front of other fish keepers. Check in on us on Saturday. We have a great group of fish keepers at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. That's every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. That's 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific or noon Eastern. And uh, we get into some great discussions. Stop on by if you can or catch the replay. Also, uh, if you'd like to support the channel, become a Patreon. You can join the Garage Gang. It uh, starts at about three bucks a month, and at the higher levels you get some cool stuff like mugs and, and uh, hoodies and good stuff like that. All right, thank you so much for your support. Just you being here is actually enough. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.